All right, so this is our first look at uh, using um, devices. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you know the device is turned on. Go ahead and plug it in. Uh, don't turn on Adobe Animate until you first plug in your tablet. Get into the computer. What's that? Yeah, in, uh, don't run Adobe Animate until you first plug in the device into the computer. So if you had Adobe Animate running, save your work, close Adobe Animate, and then plug in the tablet. I would not recommend plugging it into the monitor, the cable near the monitor. I would plug it into the tower. It doesn't look like that cable near your monitor has enough power uh, to fully interface with the device. So plug it into the tower. The cable's a little bit short, but you should be able to plug it in and reach your desktop. You may get a pop-up on the tablet that says, um, USB debugging connected, approve, click OK to approve it. Says use USB for file transfer? Yes, click OK on that one. So if any pop-ups happen, just click OK on those and you should be all right. So step one, turn on the device. Step two, plug it in. Step three, it might pop up telling you uh, USB debugging, yes or no, click OK. And transfer file transfers, click OK. So once that's set up there, then you can uh, turn on Adobe Animate. You might also get some pop-ups in the corner of Windows here. Uh, mine already disappeared. But on the bottom right corner of Windows, you might get some pop-ups that say, uh, devices uh, is setting up, yeah. Now, of course, at any point, if this is not working like how mine is working, you want to let me know, me or Ben know, as soon as possible so we can make sure you're on track. Um, so, I've plugged in the device. I'm going to open up Adobe Animate. And when you first open Animate, you've got your various templates here of projects to create, right? And we've, we've worked with HTML5 Canvas and ActionScript 3. This time, you see here we've got Air for Desktop, Air for Android, Air for iOS. So one of these three Air projects is the one you're going to use depending on what kind of app you want to create. You can use Adobe Animate to create, to create apps that get installed in Windows or Mac, you know, full real apps that can get installed on Windows or Mac. We've also got apps that we can create for Android or iOS. And we can switch between them. So if I created an Android one, I can convert it to iOS later. And like I said, uh, we're going to focus on Android apps because I've got a classroom full of Android devices to lend you. And it looked like 90% of us had an Android phone to, to work with. But if you've got an iOS, an iPhone and such, you will be able to do that later. So step, our step here is you want to create a brand new Air for Android app project. So click on that, Air for Android. That'll create a vertical vertically oriented uh, canvas. If you're curious on the right side, the size of this is 480 by 800. You don't really have to know that, but you can note it if you want. Every time you create one of these um, Android projects, it'll be vertical like that. Now, if, you're, if you want to create a, a game that's landscape, obviously you just switch those two. We're, uh, we're going to start with the vertical one, uh, but when you do your game, it could be landscape by switching those values. At this point, we'll simply do, um, just draw a quick little happy face. This is going to be your first, this is going to be your first app. And then we're going to, we're going to do file save as. Now obviously what I've got inside of the canvas is what's going to be visible on my device. So just draw something and then file save as. Now at this point, uh, hopefully it doesn't crash. I know for a few people when you do a save as, it crashes right away. So if yours does crash, 
in the uh, network folder, I've got a uh, template here that seems to fix the problem. Uh, so just note this, that in the network folder I've got something called blank Android do not edit FLA. So when you try to do a save as and it just crashes, it seems that if you open that one first and then try to create your own file, it then behaves. That's just something weird that seems to happen in this lab. Okay, so where we're going to save this at, you can save it to your flash drive or desktop. And we'll just save it with today's date. Nothing special. I'm going to save it to my flash drive. I'm going to put it in its own folder. So create a folder, today's date. What's today? The second or the third? Second. So I'm creating a new folder on my flash drive with today's date. And in that folder, I'm going to save this file. And you can put your last name in the name of the file, or the date, or whatever. The name doesn't really matter at this point. But I'm going to put my last name. I'm saving it into a project folder. I'll mention that as we keep working. But this app should be in a folder for it to fully, uh, fully function. Click Save. This will be the usual FLA file. It's going to still be you know, an Adobe Animate file. Uh, it's going to have several lines. Eventually, our project is going to have several lines of uh, code, action script code. Now, if you took CIS 125, you had some exposure to action script on the last few weeks of the class. Uh, you used code snippets and such, and that's basically uh, code that was written uh, for you to do a few actions, a few things. What were some of the things you did in ActionScript in 125? Drag and drop. Drag and drop. So you clicked something, you moved it across the screen. So you see ActionScript is going to be the programming language for us to um, do interactivity. The very first project that we will do, the very first game, is going to be what I call a tap frenzy game. It's going to be a game where things are going to be running around on the screen. You're going to tap them to get points. Maybe some of them are going to have negative points. Maybe some are going to have random points. There's going to be a boss that's going to come at you. You're going to have to tap it and, and kill it and defeat it. And it's going to have a high score counter and stuff like that. So that is going to uh, take what you've done before, so far, about your character or the world you're creating and what kind of game can I create with things are coming at me and I gotta tap them and kill them you know like a sort of like uh, I don't know like a, a, a very basic rail shooter things are coming at you, you gotta tap them and hit them stuff like that so that's all thanks to action script the the coding language part of action uh, part of Adobe animate and our game is probably going to be around 500 lines of code. So that means it's a tiny game. Because a lot of other games are thousands, tens of thousands of lines of code. So ours is going to be uh, pretty modest. But again, based on your idea, your characters, you're going to make it very good. So imagine that this is, you know, the intro screen to our project and uh, we're gonna put it on on the device so here's what we do go up to the edit menu sorry go to the file menu file menu and you've got an item at the bottom air for Android settings it may say air 26 or 25 or whatever number it says but it says air for Android settings question they don't plug in the device uh, plug in the device no, you just plug it Yes, I'm not. 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 Yes, I'm not.
All right. All right, let's go over to the uh, Air for Android settings. Obviously, if you were doing this for an iPhone, it would say Air for, for, Air for iOS settings. So let's select Air for Android settings. Uh, we get this panel here with a variety of tabs that we will look at in detail a little later. But in general here, we're saying, OK, there's an output file. We're going to create a brand new type of file, a .apk, an Android package file. This is the actual app file. Uh, if you think about it in the long term, you can. we're going to make a couple of games in this class. You could publish these games for real at the real app stores. We'll probably have a lecture on that if you want to go that far. And what you're going to upload to there is this actual APK file. App name is going to be the icon that appears, be, uh, the, the text that appears below your icon. So we'll just leave that as is, but later on we'll change its name. Uh, app ID, don't worry about that for the moment. Uh, version number, oops, is mine crashing already? Uh, version number, you can leave that alone for the moment, but we'll have a version 1 of the app or a version 2 or whatever. Version label, don't worry about that. Okay, aspect ratio, our app is going to be portrait. If we wanted it landscape, we can change it there. Don't worry about it. Is it going to be full screen um, or not? So all of these settings here, just leave them as is. We'll cover them in a little bit more detail a little bit later. And so um, if, the, if you need that, uh, these are going to be changed a little bit later if we want, but nothing really to change here. So let's jump over to Languages tab. Uh, here we can set the language of our app, probably English, but you can select different ones if you want. The language of our app. Permissions. Uh, our app can access various features of a device, and right now none of them are active. But if I wanted my app to be able to connect to the camera of the device, I would turn that on. The one we want at the moment is internet. We want our app to connect to the internet. But think of the concept here. Let's say we're going to make our version of our game that we want the person's face to show up in the high score screen. Well, we'd have to uh, activate the camera, write the code, and then our app will be able to take a photo of the person and then show their photo on the high score list. That's the point of these permissions. What is our app allowed to access on the device? We'll just do internet at the moment. Icons. We can't do this at the moment, but these are going to be the icons that are attached to your app. So obviously every, every app, uh, when it's on the device, it's got some kind of icon. And we're going to do this eventually, but we're going to make icons for our app. And notice we have to make these different sizes. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to make six different icon sizes because someone may be, looking, may be using our app on an older or smaller device, so we need a small icon. Maybe it's working on a big tablet, so we need a big size. So right here, um, we'll do this later. We need to make icons for our app. Right now, it's going to have a very generic app icon. And finally, deployment. If you open up the deployment, that one might take a moment. It has to think and connect with your device. So if it doesn't pop up right away, just keep waiting a moment. Let me give you an overview of what this is saying and then what we do here. There's a part over here that says certificate and password. Um, we are going to become real app uh, developers. Therefore, we need like credentials to show that I'm an app developer. Here's my official app. Uh, I'm vouching for my app. So these are free to create. And we'll create one in a moment. But this is something, this is a file that we're going to create that um, we, uh, we need to save and keep for the rest of the semester so that we can uh, in create these apps as a real developer. We are going to create this app 
that will uh, be used on a real device, so that's fine. We're going to have air run time, that's fine. And then I think overlooking a few people's shoulders, you have something different here, perhaps. Uh, turn on install application on the connected Android device. So when you turn on that check mark, perhaps you'll see a pop up on your tablet that says allow USB debugging. Exactly, allow USB debugging. So um, you want to turn on the check mark perhaps that appears on your device and say, yes, remember this. So I would turn on that check mark. If you didn't do it right now, that's okay, we can do it later. But turn on the check mark and click OK on the device. That will then allow the device to be connected to Adobe Animate. There's another check mark here. Launch application on the connected device? Yeah, as soon as I publish my project, I want it to appear on my device. And then on which device? The one that's plugged in here, whatever your serial number is. If you don't see this, I'll help you in just a moment. But this is very important here for it to um, communicate, for Adobe Animate to communicate with your device. If you still don't see anything here, you might press refresh and it'll scan the USB ports again and hopefully find it. So we need to back up here and do this part. We need to create a certificate that says, uh, I'm Victor, the app developer. Here's my official credentials. Let me install apps. So click Create. We get a brand new screen here. All of this that we create that we set up here, we cannot really change it later. So you want to make sure you create it properly now. This is going to create a special file that you, again, you want to keep it. And it's going to have your credentials here. You can create as many of these developer certificates as you want, but you would want to create one and keep using it for this class. And obviously, if you do decide to create real apps in the future publisher name, this is where you can make up uh, the name of your app development company. Congratulations, you're an app developer. You just make up a name right here and again you can't really change this later on but you can make one later to be your real one. This could just be for, for testing things out. But I'm, I'm going to be an app developer, and my company, quote unquote, is called Victor's Cool Apps. Obviously, don't rip me off. Do your own publisher name. You can make it be whatever you want. Actually, whoops, I'm thinking ahead. Organization name is going to be the name of your company. Publisher name is going to be your name. Got that backwards. Okay, publisher name is your name, and organization name is the name of your company, your organization. Organizational unit is just the fancy name of your job title. So if you make apps, what do you think your, uh, or games, what do you think your, your job title might be? App developer. Sure, app developer, game developer, game guru, whatever whatever you uh, want as your sort of like job title in this company. App developer, game developer, app master. So you are most likely situated in the US as an app developer. So put US there or change it if you'd like to. It's only in two letter initials. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in uh, Mexico, then I guess it's MX. If I'm in Japan, it's JP. And um, probably just US. Okay, password. This file is like your ID card. You know, if you want to drive, you need a driver's license. If you want to get into a bar, you need a you need an ID. This is your this is your ID to prove that you're an app developer. So it needs a password. 
so that no one else uses it and makes apps under your name. So put whatever kind of password you want here. Um, write it down or memorize it. And uh, you can you can have a terrible password like me, two letters if you want. This is just um, I have too many passwords. I'm going to forget a new one, so I'll just make up an easy one. But if you are doing this for real, for your own apps, you want obviously a real password that is a little harder to break than mine. Uh, type of certificate that cannot be changed, so don't worry about it. Validity period, the default 25 years, that's fine. Uh, so basically this uh, credential is going to be yours for the next 25 years. So that means you can make apps for the next 25 years. Save as. Okay, click Browse, and we're about to save this file somewhere, like in your flash drive, like in the folder of this project. So Browse. I'm going to save it in the same folder where my project currently is. It's recommending the name, you know, my last name p 12 That's fine. You can change it to be called, you know, my certificate if you want. You can call it whatever you want. Make sure it ends in dot P12. I don't know what that stands for, but this is your certificate file. As we make more apps, we want to reuse this file, ideally. But you can create one whenever you want, change your credentials, but then you have to keep using that P12 file every time. Save. And then click OK. It'll think about it for a moment as it uh, creates a special certificate file, encrypts it, saves it to your disk, and then it says, OK, a self-signed certificate has been created. Click OK on that. That takes you back here saying, you've got an app. Our credential is our P12 file. Uh, you need to put the password then to actually use it and say, remember my password so you don't have to retype it. And then at the bottom, click Publish. So this is going to compress your code. It's going to bring it all together. It's then going to connect to your device and then show it on, on the device. So just wait on that. And then we'll see what happens. All right, so if this worked, the odd thing is that it's it might pop up with a with a warning sort of thing. That's okay, because then I see my app on my device. I'm not sure why it still shows that uh, I'm not sure why it still shows that weird message, but if you see your weird face on your device, it worked. Let me pause here just to confirm it worked for everyone, then we'll go on. I'm <laughs> 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 
All right, so this is um, this very, very quick look at uh, setting ourselves up for devices. We're going to uh, do it again when we actually start our project. Uh, but this was just a little quick introduction that I wanted to do about setting up the device and then uh, showing it here. Let's play with one more quick little thing and then we'll have the time to work on your project. I gotta plug this back in. Like I like uh, like I said, uh, this is gonna be via Action Script, where we've got all of our um, all of our projects. So let's do this. Um, this uh, little weird message. Just click OK on that. You can ignore it, and then click OK on this Android settings. And if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and save. Just a regular save. Control S. Let's say this face that you drew, let's select it. And I want to do a little click and drag so I can move it around on my screen. Uh, we want to select what you drew here. We want to convert it into a symbol uh, because via the action script, uh, we usually interact with symbols, clicking on something, dragging, etc. So what's the keyboard shortcut to convert this to a symbol? F8. F8, yep, so click F8 call this MC face it's a movie clip I think we'll put our registration in the center here if you didn't put it in the center that's okay but usually the registration point is where is the uh, where is the you know where is the uh, the zero point of the of the object often right in the center is useful so MC face type movie clip type of a movie clip registration in the center and then click OK. Okay, so that is now a movie clip. It's one big object. Uh, let's shrink it a little bit also so it doesn't fill up your whole screen. Uh, somewhere around there because obviously if I drew it really, really, really big, I won't have very much, very many places to move it once I actually put it here and move it. So I'll make it a little smaller so I've got areas to move it and you can deselect it. Now, if the um, if you remember from 125, we uh, we used code snippets. We've got a way to easily be able to drag things. Because does anyone remember where are our code snippets at? You go up to Window. Yep. Window menu. Code snippets. Let's go up to the window menu. Let's select, select code snippets. All right, so code snippets are quick little bits of code that it uh, has ready for us to use. We're going to use action script. So if you open up that folder, so inside of the action script, Folder, we've got a variety of things that we can do. Um, just because I wasn't there, which, uh, does anyone remember which of the ones you did in 125? Ben, maybe. Animation. Okay. A little bit of the actions, or I mean the actions. Okay. Okay. So those probably will work. But notice we've also got a little group of mobile touch events, mobile gestures, mobile actions. So these are ones that are focused more on uh, doing action script code for devices, mobile devices. So it looks like the one I want at the moment is inside of mobile touch events, touch and drag. And notice if you hover over it, 
allows the specified object to be moved by holding and dragging. Uh, so let's see. Just double click, touch, and drag. This action requires an object to be selected on stage. OK, what does that mean? Just select it. The face that you drew, which is an object, is going to be the thing that is going to have the action script attached to it. So I'm going to select the face object that I drew, and then double click touch. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the, the snippets won't completely do everything for you. I'm just showing here, OK, well, I want to drag something. I need to select the something. Then it says, the selected symbol requires an instance name. Animate will create one for you. So you can click OK, and it'll create one for you. Or you can cancel it and write your own name. For the moment, I'll just click OK. Let it create one for me. And then, uh, of course, we'll know when how to change that a little later. Or you probably already know. Just click OK. OK, so we get a brand new layer in our timeline called Actions. And I see that on frame one, there's a little A right there to show there's action script code attached to our project. And then we get the Actions panel, which you can always get back with Window Actions, or F9. And it put a bunch of code for me, 21 lines of code. And it says a little comment here, touch and drag event allows the object to be moved by holding and dragging the object. So we're going to cover, of course, writing our own code. What do these various things mean? This is a comment. It's a little message. We've got line six, which, you know, at the moment, I don't understand what this is. But if you kind of read it, there's something about multi-touch going on, touching the screen and such. There's something that says movie clip one, add event listener, touch event, touch begin, touch end. Again, we're going to shift after turning in the assignment today, we're going to shift to a lot of this, a lot of coding. And honestly, for a lot of students, this is a huge culture shock. I've been so used to drawing and painting and animating and multimedia, and now it's going to be coding. And this can be very difficult because the thing about it is if you mistype one character the thing could break not one line or one command one character this is called movie clip but if I called it movie clip that is an error what's the difference capital, capital letter so capital letters will matter a lot how you name your things how you write your code all of that will matter and so this is the this is starting on the next lecture this is the part where of course make sure you're you're following along if you're falling behind at any point call us over i don't want you to fall behind because errors will snowball on top of errors and and things won't work and you'll get frustrated and it was just one character you mistyped so there's a command that is saying something about touch begin as soon as you begin touching something do something and there's a command that says when you stop touching it, it does something else. There's something about a drag boundary here, a bunch of letters and commands in the stage. This will make sense as we work on it. And then touch begin handler, event target start touch drag, and then event handler stop, stop touch drag. So these 22 lines or so of code are what is necessary for us to click and drag something. And this is what we will see when we talk about coding. It's when we play a game, when we use an app, it's so easy. I press the button, it does something. Behind the scenes, there's one or 100 lines of code happening to get that simple thing to work. So for us, 22 lines of code plus comments and spaces means we can now drag this object. I want to see it in action in my, in my device. So let's save our save our code so far and I, I want to load the latest version of my of my program onto the device we need to publish it again how did we do that the first time walk me through it 
How did we put the face on the device the first time? What were the steps on that? File menu, air for Android settings. So let's go to file, air for Android. It remembered everything we did before, language, permissions, whatever. Deployment is the important tab. It remembers my uh, certificate file, and it remembers my password. All I really need to do is just publish. Go ahead and publish it. Depending on the complexity of your code, it may take longer subsequent times that you update your app because it has to recompile the code and republish it. But eventually, it'll give you that warning, which you can ignore. It'll then put it onto the device, and then you should be able to tap and drag. And then eventually, you should be able to tap and drag. All right, raise your hand if it worked, if you got the thing. OK, cool. Now take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You're an app developer. So obviously, we're going to get much more complex. This is as much as I wanted to show for today. I want to show about plugging in the device, creating the right type of file, setting up some of these settings here, playing with a little quick bit of code, and seeing our results. Uh, question in the corner over there, guys? Arnoldo and everyone, question? OK, just a little, little quieter, please. So. Um, this obviously is step zero for what we're going to do eventually. We're going to write a lot more code. Again, so imagine the idea is these little things are going to be running around the screen, and I'm going to be tapping them and getting points and, and killing them and getting a high score, and here comes a boss. I'm going to tap it and kill it, or uh, it's going to faint, let's say. So um, that's what's coming soon, but uh, this that we've done so far, as usual, I'm recording it. If you'd like a refresher on it, you need to send me an email asking for the links to the videos. We're going to end the lecture here. You're going to continue then to work on your animated movie project due by 4. And that's it for the day. Any general questions on what I've talked about today so far? All right, so start thinking about uh, making this kind of game. And when we do the lecture next time, I'll give you the full details of what the requirements will be and such.